I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down, yeah. Can you tell me why? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliana, and as I promised in my custom desktop backgrounds video, today I'm gonna show you how to make custom matching folder icons. This is ever so slightly more difficult than the last video, but I think as you guys saw from that one, things are really easy once you get the hang of it, so it's no big deal. So personally for me, I like to make my folder icons match my desktop, but no pressure there. You can do any kind of folder icons you want, and that's really my goal in this video is that you guys understand how to create yours from scratch to be literally any icon in the entire world that you could want. For me, I like to stick to the basic. I think I've done hearts, palm trees, stars, airplanes, stuff like that, but you can do anything that you want. Um, for me, I like to match the theme of my desktop, so if I do one that's travel themed, I'll do an airplane. If I do one that's beach themed, I'll do a palm tree, but it's seriously whatever you want. Just like in the last video, I think for the majority of it, I'm just gonna do a voiceover and a screen recording so that you can see exactly how I do it step by step. But I just wanna start off with a few little tips and tricks and things just to keep in mind when you're working on this. So the very first one is that PNGs are necessary. It's very, very easy to make something a PNG. There are tons of websites online. I'm going to link down below my favorite one to use. Basically what a PNG means is that all that white space around a photo or an icon won't exist once it's a PNG. That'll become transparent. And then you're able to make that into your folder icon without having like any white around it. It's just gonna be clear. Um, I'm sure I'll insert a picture right here of the difference between a PNG and a regular icon and you guys will understand exactly what I mean. Another thing to keep in mind is just in general keeping the icon large enough. If you make something that's really, really small, obviously it's gonna show up really, really small. But yeah guys, that's really it. This is not super difficult. I'm gonna head right over into the screen recording so you guys can see how I do it. I'll walk you through it. I hope you guys love this video and let's just get right on into it. Alrighty, here we go. So first off, I just changed my background to one of the other things I made in our last video so that I could use that to make a folder cover that matched. When you have a background like this, there are lots of options for things that you can use and I like to use the colors and symbols or icons that are already existing within my background. So the first thing I see are these butterflies. I think those would make a really good symbol, but also the sunflowers would be pretty cool. Plus there are lots of just really cool colors in general that I'll be able to use. So I just go down and I start searching just on regular Google search for icons that would be cool. And I'm gonna look for a butterfly icon first. I wanna find like one of those cool orange butterflies. Uh, what are those called? Monarch butterflies. I'm gonna use a monarch butterfly and I change it over to clip art or line drawing in order to find the icon that's perfect for me. So I just click through until I found one I liked and then as soon as I found it, we'll move on to the next step. So I finally found one I liked and I'm saving that onto my desktop. And the next step is to change it to a PNG. Of course, you can always find an icon from the start that is a PNG, but if you don't, you will have to give it a transparent background. So that's what we're doing now. For some reason, I type in PNG maker. I've always done that. And the second link down, remove, is the one that I've always used. So that's what we're gonna use in this one. It's super, super easy to use. You just drag your image right to the upload image spot and it makes it into a PNG for you. So simple as can be. Save that back onto your desktop. And then last step is just to put that onto the folders. All right, so the actual process of putting it onto a folder is pretty simple. You're gonna open it up, press Command A to copy the entire image, then Command C to copy it, and then go back over to the folder you wanna change, click Get Info, press on the current icon, and then Command V to paste it. Repeat that exact same process on all of the icons you wanna change, and it'll apply to them all. You can of course use multiple icons and do the same thing, but for me, I think it's just simpler if all of your icons match. Alrighty, and that's how that one looks. I'm actually in love with it. That is definitely the icon I would choose if I was doing this background, but I do want to show you guys how to do one that's truly custom, and for that, I'm going to use the Pick Monkey app.
So when you get onto PicMonkey, choose the blank canvas option and then make the largest image you can. So for me, that's 2000 by 2000 pixels, which is just like a big square that you can create your design on. And then I search for the perfect icon. I'm actually gonna show you guys with the classic star where you can do a heart or a square or literally any kind of shape you want. So I chose the classic star icon and I just resized it to be as large as I could. As I mentioned at the start of the video, you really have to do things about sizing or you can wind up with a really small icon for your folder or something that's very blurry. So just resize that to be as big as you want. And then if you want to do the typical like star with a shadow type thing, you're gonna to need to have two of them, of course. Once they're resized, I change the top one to any random color just so I can visualize it while I'm moving it around to give it that shadow effect. So for the final color of your star, obviously you can pick any color you want, but I like to match it directly to my desktop. So I go and I screenshot a tiny portion of any color I like my desktop that I want to be a color that, you know, stands out. So for me, on this occasion, I chose this yellow color that's underneath some of the script that I have on my screen. I'm going to use that for my star. I add that in by clicking add image, computer, selecting the screenshot that I just took, and then once that becomes part of the image, I just move it off to the side. I'm gonna click on the star, click the color option, and then if you pick the little like picker pipette, you can change the color to whatever you want. So I move everything out of my way and I just choose that yellow color and it becomes the upper star color. And I just move around the star, give it whatever kind of dimension I want to give it, and then once it's done, I screenshot the entire image. Then we head over to the website to make it a PNG again. I use the same website for this again. Same process, you just drag it in and out comes your PNG. So after you say that to your desktop, it's exactly the same process again. Command A and then Command C. Hold down control and click on the folder you want to change. Scroll down to get info. Click on the icon at the top and then command V. Do the same thing to all the other folders and you're all done. I just waste away, don't know what life about. Alrighty, we're all done. I think this looks so good when it matches something you already have on the screen like that. So I'm not going to do a tutorial for this last one. It's the exact same process as the Monarch Butterfly one I did first, but I just thought this would also suit the screen really, really well since there's that one sunflower picture up in the top left. Same exact process. It's one that I just downloaded off of Google. I think it's one of the very first things that comes up if you look up Pix art for sunflowers, but I just want to show you how well this one suited as well. Alrighty, there we go again, all done. I hope you guys found that really easy. I hope I was really clear on all the steps to do. But if I wasn't, please comment down below. I would love to help you guys out. And just like I offered in the last video, I am super bored. So if you guys need help with anything at all, just let me know. I would love to create a custom icon for you. It'll literally take me five minutes. So I would be overjoyed to create one for you. And even if you want one that just matches a certain background, I'd love to make a background for you. Um, this has kind of become a major hobby of mine. I've just been making background after background after background, even though I'm happy with the one that I have right now. But if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment ideas down below for other videos. It can be related to desktops or anything else in the entire world. I am just loving creating content for you guys right now. And as always, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate everyone who subscribes to me so, so much means the world to me every single time a new person subscribes to my channel. There are other desktop and just Mac in general hacks I could show you guys. I wouldn't really call them hacks, honestly. They're just like little organization tips, but I'm gonna save those unless you guys wanna see them. Some of them are like kind of like the obvious things you know how to do if you're used to working with MacBooks. But if you guys are interested, definitely let me know. I definitely have at least one more video worth of content I could make on this topic. So if you're interested in that, for sure let me know. I'd love to make that video for you guys. I hope I helped in this video and the last one making your desktop super, super cute. If you create something cool, definitely DM me and show me. I would love to see. I hope you guys have an amazing week. I hope everyone's doing really well. I am keeping everyone in my thoughts and prayers during this isolation and I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, see you guys.